Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 51 through 60. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who uh, predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him, you who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious, and they gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, Faith Westwood. Blessings to you on this Memorial Day weekend. It's so good to be with you today. Welcome to those who are attending in person, and a special greetings to all who are tuning in online from near and far places. Now, in the Five Secrets sermon series, we're discovering five kingdom secrets to living and dying well. Thus far, we've discovered secret number one, be true to yourself. Secret number two, become love. Secret number three, live the moment. Today, as we claim secret number four, we remember that there are times in our lives that we come to crossroads, and we must make important decisions. How can we make spirit-filled decisions so that we can live with few regrets? In that spirit, join me in prayer. Almighty God, open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our eyes that we may see your glory in our midst. And open our hearts that we might know your spirit's presence with us in these moments. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, got dreams? Friends, do you have dreams? One of the realities in life is that famous people always weren't so famous. So this following is taken from a popular Facebook post. At age 23, Tina Fey, comedian and a producer, was working at a YMCA. At age 23, Oprah was fired from her first reporting job. At age 24, writer Stephen King was working as a janitor and living in a trailer. At age 27, artist Vincent Van Gogh failed as a missionary and decided that he should go to art school. At age 28, J.K. Rowling of Harry Potter fame was a single parent and living on welfare. At age 30, actor Harrison Ford was just a carpenter. At age 39, Julia Child released her first cookbook and she got her own cooking show at the age of 51. Now, whether your dreams have been realized or unrealized, these stories remind us that it's never too late. As we remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice this Memorial Day weekend, we remember that their unfulfilled dreams allowed others to realize their hopes and dreams for the future. Now, Dr. John Izzo, author of The Five Secrets You Must Discover Before You Die, would certainly agree with that sentiment. He contends that there are five secrets to, that are key to living well and dying happy. And he says that it really doesn't matter how old you are when you discover these secrets. And from that point on, these secrets can enhance one's life if they choose to follow them. Now, among the 235 people who lived well and were being interviewed, they were asked what they feared the most. 
How many of you think you know what it is? How many of you think that it's death? Actually, it's not death that they feared the most. Many people said that they did not want their final words to be, I wish I had. That motivated and propelled people to live their lives differently. And of those interviewed, most had few regrets in their lives. So secret number four is leave no regrets. Now, Dr. Izzo is fair in saying that it is inevitable that we are all going to face regrets in our lives. But it's how we handle them that makes the biggest difference. To avoid living with regret, Izzo says that we must live with courage and move toward what we want rather than from what we fear. And we need to overcome the inevitable disappointments that life hands us. With secret number four, all interviewed expressed coming to some kind of crossroads in their lives. And it was at such crossroads that they decided to have enough courage to take some risks. The New Testament apostles were great witnesses for us in terms of having courage, taking risks, and certainly leaving no regrets in life. The early Christian church we know struggled in those years. Even though they had a great passion for sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, the rest of the world was not responding so well. The apostles knew without a doubt that Jesus was the Messiah. They wanted to fulfill his commission to them. But to much of the Roman world, Jesus Christ was just another failed prophet, not a savior. It was up to those apostles to tell the stories of Jesus and to continue to transform lives in his name. Now, while you might know Stephen was the first Christian martyr, you may not know or remember what led him to those moments described in our focus passage. So here's a little more context. When the number of Christian disciples was increasing exponentially, the Hellenistic Jews, that is, those who were influenced by Greek culture, and the Hebrew Jews had a disagreement. This disagreement was about making sure that the Hebrew widows had enough food in the daily distributions. It was important stuff. The 12 apostles had then invited them to choose seven men that were full of the spirit and wisdom so that they could take responsibility over this important mission and ministry. That way, the 12, the new 12, I should say, could continue to give their attention to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Stephen was one of the men who was chosen for this very important task. Now, according to Acts chapter 6, verse 8, Stephen is described as a man who is full of God's grace and power. Continuing in chapter 6, Stephen boldly spoke with the power of the Spirit. Yet it was the religious and political authorities that felt that he was speaking blasphemous words against Moses and against God. When they seized Stephen, they took him to the Sanhedrin, and Stephen had this amazing courage, and he actually preached this fire and brimstone kind of sermon, opening the eyes to many people about Jesus Christ, while also enraging the leaders who were present. Sometime later this weekend or this week, read chapter 6 and the preceding verses in chapter 7 to embrace this complete story. But from what we hear today, Stephen was indeed bold. After all, he called the people stiff-necked, right? So what does this description mean? Stiff-necked means stubborn, arrogant, unable to do the right thing. And in this case, it was that they were unable to do the right spiritual thing. Stephen just wanted to remind the leaders of their family history and that Jesus Christ was the righteous one who was predicted to come. Jesus Christ is the long-awaited and exalted Messiah. He rules over all, and he must be acknowledged and obeyed. Stephen insists, though, that the people who were listening to him were just like their ancestors. They were stubborn and arrogant. They were not willing to do the right spiritual thing. You always resist the Holy Spirit, he says. 
They always persecuted the prophets who were trying desperately to bring them the word of God that they most needed to hear. And these people actually did resist the Holy Spirit, betrayed Jesus Christ, and murdered him. And the leader's response? Of course, they were, they were filled with this rage against Stephen. Our passage reminds us then that Stephen, being so filled with the Spirit, looked up to heaven. And when he looked up to heaven, he saw the glory of the Lord. The leaders could not stand this. And so what did they do? They covered their ears. They screamed. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And a man named Saul was standing there approving his death. Stephen's last words are a testimony to his passion for doing all that he could do for Jesus Christ. Hear his prayer again. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And then Stephen fell asleep into death, spared from the pain and the agony of being stoned. Stephen became the first Christian martyr, which literally means witness. N.T. Wright says, and I quote, If we knew nothing about Christianity except the fact that its martyrs called down blessings and forgiveness rather than cursing and judgment on their torturers and executioners, we would have a central insight into the whole business. Indeed. The only explanation for this, of course, is, is Jesus Christ. Remember that Jesus made loving one's enemies a central, non-negotiable part of his teaching. And even on the cross, Jesus bore witness to love and forgiveness. Now, I referenced Dr. Izzo earlier speaking about how to live avoiding regrets. He said, First, live with courage and move toward what we want rather than from what we fear. Stephen certainly embraced this, didn't he? Stephen faced that crossroads in his life. He believed in Jesus. He followed Jesus. He knew the risks if he continued to speak out in faith in Christ. And yet he continued to share that truth that he had experienced in Jesus. He moved toward the kingdom of God rather than away from what he feared. And yes, it cost him his life. Second, Izzo says, overcome the inevitable disappointments that life hands us. After Stephen's death, the rest of the apostles faced the reality that a man named Saul was going to continue to persecute them and pursue them and put them to death. It had to be a tremendous disappointment to all of them witnessing Stephen's death. Yet what did they do? Did they go back and crawl in those underground caves and wait for something else to happen? No. Filled with the Spirit, they continued to preach the good news. They prayed until a solution came. Do you remember Acts chapter 9? Saul received a blinding visit from Jesus himself, and the rest is history. A somber reality for us today is that there are more Christian martyrs than we would dare imagine. According to an organization called Open Doors, which supports the persecuted church in more than 70 countries, 5,621 Christians were killed for faith-related reasons in 2023. On average, it is estimated that more than 13 Christians are killed each day for their faith. In addition, 14,766 churches and Christian properties were attacked in 2023, and that's all around the world. It's sobering, isn't it? On Memorial Day weekend, you and I are keenly aware of those who died in service to our country. On average, more than 1,400 people die while on active military duty each year. And during times of war, of course, that number increases significantly. 
These sacrifices should certainly challenge us in terms of today's secret number four, leave no regrets. Of course, spiritually speaking, you and I might choose to be careful not to be stiff-necked when it comes to Jesus Christ. You and I need to remember that through Jesus, we can enter into that new relationship with God. We can look forward to a future that is filled with hope. The grave is not the end of our stories. We can look forward to the promise of eternal life. But in addition, you and I cannot resist the Holy Spirit that has been given to us to guide us and lead us in our faith journeys. If you and I are truly living in the Spirit, we shouldn't have any regrets because we are always focused on the heavenly prize that is before us. Again, it is inevitable that you and I are going to have some regrets in our lives. But we can't focus on those regrets or be too hard on ourselves. You know, I once knew a woman named Louise. And Louise shared that along the way in her life, she would imagine herself as an experienced lady sitting on the porch. She would then imagine looking back on her life at the decisions that she had made. Louise said that this approach always gave her perspective when she was facing challenges and coming to many crossroads in her life. And by the way, according to her granddaughter, she's post-80 now. She's still aging well, still sitting on her porch, and still living in this way. You know, my family and I have come to many crossroads in our lives. Some of these have been easy and Others have been more challenging. This past year, making the transition from Columbus to Omaha has been one where my family members and I have traveled a lot more miles, and yet we've also learned so much, and we've grown even closer together. We deeply appreciate before us those opportunities to say yes and to know that the Spirit is always guiding us to where we most need to be. Now, to leave no regrets means first realizing that you're not going to live forever. And then it is important to ask yourself these questions, especially at moments of crossroads. If I only had six months to live, what would I want to do? What is really important? What should I try to do now? What relationships do I need to heal now? And is it worth the risk? And am I living for God in my life and allowing the Spirit to lead? If no, why not? And what might happen if you were to live for God? In the early days of the church, The apostles had this sense of urgency in sharing the good news and accomplishing goals for the kingdom of God. They truly embraced what it means to leave no regrets, even if it meant taking huge risks and being martyred for their mission. Perhaps we too need to have that sense of urgency, that sense of risk-taking mission to accomplish God's goals as well as our own. So friends, again, I ask you, do you got dreams? Our apostles had big dreams. Stephen and many others were martyred before all of those dreams could be fulfilled. And what's humbling for us this weekend is to remember many men and women gave their lives for the freedoms and dreams that we so often take for granted. Maybe you still need some more encouragement. Stan Lee, the creator of most of the Marvel comics, didn't release his first big comic book until he was 40 years old. And any Marvel fans know that he made a cameo appearance in nearly every single Marvel movie that was ever made. Morgan Freeman landed his first major movie role at age 52. And Grandma Moses didn't begin her painting career until the age of 76. 
Whatever your dream is, it's never too late to achieve it. You aren't a failure because you haven't found fame and fortune by the age of 21, 41, 61, or even 81. Never tell yourself you're too old to make it. Never tell yourself you're too young to make it. Never tell yourself you missed your chance. Never tell yourself you aren't good enough. You can do it. In the church, you and I are going to continue to unlock the secrets that we must discover so that we may live well and die happy. With God's grace, Jesus' sacrifice, and the Spirit's guidance, it's worth the risks to live your life in such a way to leave no regrets. Amen. As part of our Connecting Hearts Summer, we're going to engage in some some faith family prayer. So this is the first weekend that we're going to do this in person with those who are sitting near you and or online. And online you can do this with others or silently reflect. I want you to turn and be with those around you and ask one another, how might I pray for you this week? Then we will close with a pastoral prayer and Lord's Prayer. Please turn and share with one another. As we continue this practice this summer, we want to continue to invite you to get to know those people who are sitting around you, and certainly you can begin this process before worship even begins. We want to pray for one another. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty and gracious and ever-loving God, we thank you and we praise you for the blessing of this day. Lord, hear each and every one of our prayers those that are spoken from our lips and those that we carry on our hearts before you. God, this weekend, we pray for traveling mercies for all who are on the road. We ask your blessings upon those who are visiting graves and decorating them, as well as those who are attending Memorial Day services tomorrow, remembering and rehearsing their faith. God, guide us and lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may trust in your guidance, in your leading, and that we can make every attempt to leave no regrets in this life. God, all of this we pray in the name of the one who taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.